First up in our mobile roundup, we're looking at Penumbe, a super stylish platform that's all about walking on rays of light. That first time I made my leap of faith onto a light bridge, I was pretty hesitant, but before long it becomes second nature. But just as you get used to the light walking mechanic, the game ratchets up the puzzles. Often there's a bit of backtracking involved as you find a light switch and then use the beam to get the key that you need. You can even use light as a weapon to vaporise your enemies in some stages. How did you find the puzzles, Hex? Well, I thought they were quite clever, especially the ones where you had to deactivate light blocks in the middle of a jump. I just thought the game's fiddly controls undermined its potential a little bit. On this level, you need to ride a light elevator, but the size of the platform is absolutely tiny, which made it frustratingly easy to slip off. Yeah, it's pretty unforgiving, and I felt like turning the game off at that point. These moths knock you off to your death if they touch you. You can draw them away by turning on a light, but even after you've done that, they still get in your way and cause me a handful of what I thought were unfair deaths. It's like the designers thought that just having a straight, simple solution to this puzzle would be too easy. Yeah, and it's a shame because there are so many other areas this game excels in. The sound design, for example, is some of the best I've heard on a smartphone. The music is a thoughtful and moody mix of tunes that suit the puzzles perfectly, and even simple things like pushing stone blocks around have real texture in their audio. It's not a perfect game, but I was prepared to overlook the frustrations and just enjoy this cerebral journey, so it was a 7 from me. I find fiddly controls on smartphone and touchscreen games so frustrating, so I can only give it a 5. Next up, Ridiculous Fishing. It's time to give your brain a rest and focus on those twitch reflexes. The premise is super simple. You dodge the fish as your hook is sinking so you can get as deep as possible. On the way back up, it's the reverse because you want to hook as many fish as you can. At this point, you've already got a pretty good game, but then you get to do this. Shooting the fish down is the perfect minigame punchline. Yeah, it sure beats a minigame about cleaning them and then cooking them, blah. Uh, but there is hidden depth everywhere in this game. You can add gadgets to your hook to electrocute the fish, but it's hard to beat the chainsaw attachment so you can mow right through them. These add-ons might sound cruel, but they're essential if you're going to be able to get deep enough to find the rare species that lurk at the bottom. And some of these fish are crazy to catch, such as the ones that only appear at certain times of the day. Whenever I wanted to bag a specific fish, I'd find myself actively avoiding all of the others on the way back up, so I didn't have unnecessary extras to shoot. And then I'd use a heavier weapon like the shotgun to stack my odds even more. I like that there's a bit to think about with this. Oh, there's just so many reasons to love this game. The art design is as quirky as they come, and there are countless clever touches, like the way the music rolls backwards as you reel back your line. Plus, there's no microtransactions at all. I'd almost forgotten what that was like to play a game and unlock everything without being asked to fork over extra cash. This is a fantastic game. You could say, I'm hooked. Oh. I'm going to give it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. I'm giving it 9 as well.